Have you ever wondered, wow, I love languages so much, if only there were a good career that I could pursue related to it? Well, I had these exact thoughts in high school. I love languages and linguistics so much to the point that I desperately scavenged the internet for any careers that revolved around language. Unsurprisingly, it seemed as if there weren't really many options for me, but after a lot of research, I finally was able to find a few careers that are related to linguistics. Now that I've graduated with a linguistics degree, I'm here making this video in order to hopefully inform other language lovers about the careers that they can pursue. With this video, hopefully I can ease your anxiety about being unemployed after graduation. Before I begin, I really want to thank all of you for subscribing and watching my content. We're at 70,000 subscribers, which is insane. I never thought people would actually enjoy my rambling about my passion for languages. I'd like to give a special shout out to Pengo, my first Patreon supporter ever. Anyways, thank you once again for being here and let's get back to the video. Okay, so the first career that we have is probably the most obvious one. It's becoming a linguistics professor. Now, when you think of a linguistics professor, you probably think of someone teaching a class. But that's not all a professor does, especially if they work at a research university. At a research university, the main objective of a linguistics linguistics professor is to contribute to the field by conducting research in the various subfields of linguistics. For example, I'm a research assistant for a linguistics professor who studies a specific variety of the Mixtec language, which is an indigenous language spoken in Oaxaca, Mexico. More specifically, he focuses on the phonetics of the language. This is just one example of linguistics research, but there are many other types of studies as well. From the perspective of a student, it doesn't appear that professors have much work to do, as they only interact with them in regards to classes. But in actuality, these professors are constantly working on their research, along with applying for grants to fund their research. Alright, now that we know what being a linguistics professor entails, how do you become one? Well, it's not easy, I can tell you that much. First, you'll need a bachelor's degree with a major in linguistics, which takes on average around 4 years. While doing the bachelor's degree, you should become a research assistant with a professor so you get experience. Then, you'll need to apply for graduate school, preferably one that does research in the field you're interested in. Finally, you will be graduating with a PhD, which takes around 5 years give or take. Now, after all that work, surely you'll be making some bank, right? Well... The average salary of a linguistics professor is pretty good, but for the near decade of academic work, it's a bit on the low side. For example, let's take a look at how much linguistics professors make at a public university like UCLA. The salaries I'll be displaying here are real salaries that are earned by linguistics professors. First, we have an assistant professor that has just been recently hired. This person earns around $89,500 per year. Pretty good for being a new hire, but remember that this person probably went through a near decade of schooling. You can earn a similar amount with just a bachelor's and some engineering careers. Okay, but what is the highest they can earn? Well, a professor a professor by the name of Bruce Hayes has been a linguistics professor for a really long time. On top of this, he has contributed a great amount of research to the university, along with publishing various textbooks. Due to this, he earns around $276,517 every year. Keep in mind that he's an outlier though. The vast majority make a low six-figure salary. Now, even if this salary seems good to you, don't get your hopes up just yet because becoming a professor after graduating is not a guarantee. If you aren't able to find a job as a professor, you might have to settle as a lecturer or individuals who mainly just teach classes, but do not contribute to any major research. Research. A lecturer at UCLA makes around $59,532 per year starting out, which is a big oof considering the amount of schooling required. Okay, so who should become a linguistics professor? If you're the type of person who can't see themselves doing anything besides research in linguistics, then this is the career for you. If all the things that I said didn't scare you away, then this could be the right fit. Ask yourself this question, if I were to get this PhD in linguistics and end up working at McDonald's afterwards, would I regret it? If you say no, then go ahead and get a PhD. With that kind of determination, I'm sure you'll make it. Now, if research doesn't interest you, there are so many other careers that you can do as well. One major one that you may have heard about is computational linguistics. This field is a mix between computer science and linguistics, so if you're really into computers, you might like this career. But what do computational linguists do exactly? Generally, computational linguistics is all about getting computer systems to understand and interpret human language. To be more specific, here are some examples of what computational linguists might do. There's machine translation, which is where you work to build an AI that translates between languages. An example of this is Google Translate. There's also chatbots, where you might work on these annoying automated customer service assistance that force you to say representative 30 times before it gives up and sends you to a real person. Another aspect computational linguists may work on is knowledge extraction. This is where a software will extract a large amount of text data and audio data and quickly gather information about it. Last but not least, there are voice assistants like Siri or Alexa, which you may work on as comp linguists. There are many other things that they can do as well, but these are some of the interesting ones I found. So what do you need in order to have this type of career? Well, first off, you'll need at least a bachelor's degree, preferably with a major in computer science. You could also double major in linguistics or have it as a minor which could help narrow your scope to computational linguistics. According to Zipia, the number of computational linguists that have only a bachelor's degree is 49%. However, you'll probably need to build up a portfolio showing off your coding skills when it comes to natural language processing, machine learning, and Python. According to the same source, around 39% of people in this field have a master's degree, which is a pretty decent amount. Rather than having a broad computer science degree, a master's program will allow you to major specifically in computational linguistics, which will massively help demonstrate to employers your expertise within the niche. So, that's how you become a computational 
computational linguist, but before deciding on this career, you probably want to hear about the salaries. As you may expect with careers that deal with technology, computational linguists earn a pretty good one, especially accounting for the fact that you can get a job with just a bachelor's degree. According to Glassdoor, the typical range is 94 to 169,000, with the median being 125,000. In addition to the base pay, you might also get compensation in the form of company stocks, which many tech companies tend to do. To get some real world examples, let's take a look at some current job openings. There is one for Facebook currently where they are offering a starting salary of 124,000 per year up to 182,000 per year as a linguist engineer. Although the term computational linguistics implies a mix of computer science and linguistics, in actuality it leans very heavily on the computer science side. So if you're not super into computer science then you might not want to do this. Personally, I was going to go into this career until I arrived to college and realized just how much I hated computer science. Some breakdowns and crying sessions later I realized this career wasn't for me and switched my career path to speech language pathology, which is actually the next career I want to talk about. Speech language pathology is a career that many people surprisingly don't know about, yet almost every elementary school has one. Well, that is if they're able to find a speech pathologist. So what does an SLP do exactly? Basically, they conduct therapy sessions with individuals to help them with any speech, language, or voice disorders. To give you some actual examples, let me explain the various different settings that an SLP might work in. We should probably start with the biggest one, which is education. According to a 2019 survey conducted by the American Speech Language Hearing Association, around 51% of SLPs work in a school setting, excluding universities and colleges. If you have ever had speech issues as a child, you probably already know what SLPs do. They help children who are behind in their speech or language compared to other children around the same age. For example, a speech pathologist may help a child who is having issues pronouncing the letter R or S. These would be called speech disorders, as these are disorders that are affecting the actual production of sounds the child is making. The SLP can also aid children with language disorders. Unlike speech disorders, which only affect a person's ability to pronounce words, language disorders actually affect the ability to process language within the brain. These children might not have issues with pronunciation, but they lag behind other children their age when it comes to interpreting words or using correct grammar. These are the kinds of disorders that speech pathologists aim to treat by the usage of speech therapy. In a school setting, you'll mostly be taking children out from classes and having short therapy sessions with them in hopes of improving their speech. In addition to therapy, a lot of paperwork is also done to document the child's progression to show to both the school and the parents. Now, what if you don't want to work with children but you're still interested in treating speech, voice, and language disorders? This leads into the next SLP setting, which is healthcare facilities. Whether it be a hospital or a private practice, these SLPs aid individuals of all ages. You may specialize in helping individuals with stutters, so you'll work at a clinic that focuses on that. You could work for a private practice that focuses on gender affirming voice therapy. As you might be able to tell, there are so many possibilities within the private practice route. In a hospital setting, however, you're mostly going to be working with individuals who have sustained some type of injury. For example, you may treat different types of aphasia, which are disorders that are caused by damages in the brain that have disrupted the brain's ability to produce or perceive language. As an SLP, you will slowly help these patients regain their language ability in hopes that they can communicate with their friends and family once again. Another setting that SLPs might work in is nursing facilities. They might be helping people with voice disorders and whatnot, but the main thing that they do is help older individuals learn how to swallow correctly. Some people lose their ability to swallow as they get older, so SLPs give them therapy in order to help them with this. Also, you can be a travel SLP or own your own private clinic, but I won't go too in depth into this because the explanation is already getting a bit long, so let's quickly dive into how to become a speech pathologist. Similar to other careers I've talked about earlier, you'll need a bachelor's degree, but this time your major is going to be in communicative disorders or something similar. Then, you'll do a master's degree in speech language pathology. If you didn't major in communicative disorders, then you can do a postdoc program that basically just catches you up on all the classes that you missed. Once you finish grad school, you'll need some supervised clinical hours and take an exam to show your proficiency and knowledge in speech pathology. Finally, after all that, you'll be a certified speech pathologist. But do the salaries that you earn make up for the heavy loans? Well, it's a bit complicated. The salaries vary wildly depending on the location, but generally, the more conservative states will pay less, especially when it comes to working in education, as some schools will put you on the same pay scale as a teacher despite your qualifications. The top four paying states according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics in ascending order is New Jersey, Hawaii, Colorado, and California. As the highest earning state, California has a median salary of $112,000. Now, you might be saying that these salaries mean nothing since the living costs in these states are pretty high. However, if you live in one of the less expensive areas of the state, you'll still be getting paid a decent amount with lower cost of living. For example, Bakersfield is a pretty inexpensive place to live in California compared to other cities like Los Angeles or San Francisco. Despite this, the salary there is actually higher since the demand for SLPs in this area is higher. I looked at the salary schedule of a school district in Bakersfield and the first year SLPs get paid around $77,000, but their salary can go up to $168,000. Keep in mind that these SLPs only work the school year, so they have summer vacation, and they live in an area with a lower cost of living, so the salaries are even better. So, is this a good career for you? Well, if you prefer a job where you're constantly interacting with others and helping them through therapy, then you'll probably enjoy this career. Even if you take out a large amount of loans for school, it still might be a career worth pursuing if you live in an area that pays their SLPs well, like California. So these are the three main careers that people typically go into if they like language or linguistics, but let me show you some careers 
careers that many people don't even think about and are related to linguistics. For example, did you know about forensic linguistics? In this field, individuals work on understanding the language of written law, they analyze linguistical evidence, and other linguistic practices relating to law enforcement. If you ever watched the show Cops or any US cop movie, you probably have heard the statement, you have the right to remain silent, anything you say can be used against you, blah blah blah. blah. This statement always has to be said to individuals who are detained after the famous case of Ernesto Miranda. Forensic linguists aided in creating a clear statement that would ensure that individuals understood their rights, leading to the distinction between coercive and voluntary interrogations. On top of aiding in the language of law, forensic linguists also may analyze the language of suspects either from voice notes, texts, emails, etc. to aid in an investigation. Sounds pretty cool, right? But how do you become one? Well, you'll need a bachelor's degree in linguistics, then you'll need a master's degree in forensic linguistics. You might also want a PhD if you want some more credibility. The path for this career isn't really straightforward as there aren't really any set requirements for being a forensic linguist. Unlike a speech pathologist who requires a license, many forensic linguists will have their own business where they work as a freelancer aiding wherever they are needed. Because of this, there isn't really like a good gauge of median salary. So according to the pay scale, the median salary is 69000 but I'm pretty sure the sample size is way too small so don't really rely on this number at all. Another career that is a bit similar to forensic linguistics is military linguistics. In this field, you'll serve the military and become a specialist in other languages, helping to decode messages and whatnot. To get into this field, you of course need to enlist in the military and have at least a high school diploma. To be considered as a candidate for a linguist's career, you need to take and pass a test called the Defense Language Aptitude Battery, which is an exam that assesses how good you are at learning languages. If you pass, you'll be sent to a special school called the Defense Language Institute Foreign Language Center in Monterey, California. At this school, individuals will go through a rigorous course for 35 to 64 weeks, during which they must become competent in language. Each week includes seven hours hours a day of classwork, five days a week, not including any self-study time or homework. Sounds rough, but you're basically getting paid to study. Also, there are four levels of fluency according to the school. You need to complete level two to graduate, which is a fluency level in which a person can understand the main gist of conversations. Individuals are expected to reach near fluency as they progress through their career. The salary ranges between 58 to 94,000 on top of all the benefits that the military provides. Now, I know that a majority of individuals who are into linguistics might not be particularly fond of working for the US military, but I thought I would mention it for people who might be interested. The next career I'll talk about is lexicography. If you like words, this one might be for you. A lexicographer's job is to write and edit entries in the dictionary. They must monitor and record any current changes occurring within a language. For example, around September 2023, the word Padawan was added to the English dictionary. It was a lexicographer's job to understand what Padawan meant and make the best definition for it. Now, how do you get into this career? Once again, a bachelor's degree is required, but it can be in linguistics or English. With this, you'll be able to start applying and getting a job in lexicography. According to Indeed, the average salary for this career is around $57,000 dollars per year. But you can earn more as you progress and if you obtain a master's degree. A similar career is copy editing. This is just what it sounds like. You work as an editor to ensure that texts have no errors in spelling, grammar, etc. This isn't just proofreading novels but can include newspapers, instruction guides, and other niche writing forms. To become a copy editor, it is recommended to get a bachelor's degree in English, linguistics, or something similar like communications. The average salary for a copy editor is $39,000, according to Indeed. Next, if you don't want to work in the US, you might be interested in becoming an English teacher abroad. I've known a few people with a linguistics degree myself Myself that have left the US to teach English. Some popular countries to go to are Japan, Korea, Taiwan, and the United Arab Emirates. Generally, the majority of positions for English teachers exist in the Middle East and Asia. With these kinds of programs, you'll generally become a teacher's assistant. So you probably won't be the main teacher, but you'll be there to assist with the native speaker's perspective. To become an English teacher abroad, you'll need a bachelor's degree and basically anything you want. But you might get an edge if you do your degree in linguistics or the language of the country you want to teach in. You'll also most likely need a TEFL certification, which is a certification that verifies that you know how to teach English. Some schools may even require a test which is similar to a TEFL but it's harder to get. If you aim to do this as a serious career and not just a short-term job after graduation, you'll probably want to get a master's degree in second language teaching. In terms of salary, the range varies so wildly that stating an average would be pointless. It heavily depends on the country you teach in and what city in that country and even then the living costs also vary wildly so a lower salary doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. Similar to this career, you can also teach a foreign language within the United States. You'll of course have to be proficient in another language but a linguistics degree typically requires you to take two different foreign languages to graduate, so you should at least have an okay grasp on at least one language. The requirements for teaching vary depending on the state, but typically you need a bachelor's degree and have a teaching license. You also have to take a test that proves your proficiency within a certain field, which in this case could be like Spanish, French, Japanese, and whatnot. Once again, the salary varies wildly, but typically the more conservative states will pay less. If you don't want to teach, but you still want to have a career that has to do with another language you learn, you can do translation. Becoming a translator is actually kind of difficult because just because you know two languages doesn't mean that you know how to translate. For example, have you ever had someone ask you, how do you say this in English? And despite you knowing what it means, you have some trouble translating it correctly in the language. Translators work on improving this translation skill. Really quick, here are three careers that aren't really related to linguistics or languages, but I think they're worth mentioning. Lawyer. Being a lawyer with a background in linguistics is really useful since you can 
use words to your advantage. There's also becoming a librarian if you're into building a community and you like books. Also, there's journalism if you're into writing. All right, that has been all the major careers I can think of that are related to linguistics or language. If there are any careers I missed, feel free to leave a comment below. I'd love to hear any other career paths related to language. And if you're interested in language content, feel free to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you next time. Ciao!